What's up guys? So, said I was gonna do it. We got a pretty in-depth Diag on one that got me kind of confused. 2016 Ford Explorer with a 3.5 failure steering. So a customer had to tow it in. I can't even get it in the shop. It's sitting outside. Um, gonna grab the launch, gonna go out there and uh, see if we could get, uh, see what's going on with it. Could be module, could be motor related. Who knows? Who knows? So check it out. Shut up and sit down. All right, guys, so let me get you guys set up here. Like I said, we're in the parking lot here. I can't even get this thing in the shop, but when you put the key in there, you go to start this thing. It's only got 44,000 miles on it too. Steering assist, fault service required, hill start assist not available, and you can't even turn the steering wheel. That's it, it's locked. Service track. All the messages are there, so we'll get this launch hooked up, see what we got, see what kind of outputs we got on the assist. So I find the DLC port here. I like to feel for it blindly. There you are. All right. All right, get this thing powered up. Ford, let's get you guys set up on this thing. Go to automatic search, get everything pulled up, turn the key off. The only downside to this launch is it takes forever to, uh, you know, load up some of these PIDs sometimes. That wasn't too bad. Uh, 2016, yes. It's running through all the loop PIDs. So let's go to, uh, let's go to health reports. Let's see what kind of codes we got in this thing. Like we got a couple of ABS body codes. So we got ABS codes. Let's see what's in the ABS real quick. Let's go through these. Read code. Key on engine off. All right, so we got obviously invalid data received from the power steering control module. That's where I'm leaning toward on this. Um, steering wheel position sensor, invalid data again. Um, looks like a manufacturer code. So two of the same, probably pending and permanent. And then we got some snap data um, for the same. So two codes there. Um, let's go back, see what we got in the body control module. All right, so we got auto lamp on input. All right, so nothing that we care about in that one. And steering control module. Read codes. And then maybe we'll do some bi-directional, see what kind of input outputs we have on this. You hear the car going through, it's getting into the module. All right, guys. So I went and grabbed the pen and a piece of paper to write down those codes. And of course, you know, phone rings, customer came in, so I had to take care of that stuff. So it looks like we got, uh, comes up four codes. Um, steering shaft torque sensor number two. We got that for two times, probably pending and permanent we got a motor code and then a control module um i want to say i want to say these are it's built in the module is built in to the motor on this um at least from what i remember on a taurus we had done i think that was like a 14 or 15 they didn't really change much um let's see what kind of data we get out of it here read data um we could check the amp going to the motor, the steering wheel angle. So here, let's select the whole page. 
put an OK. We'll start this thing. And usually from, you know, launch and all that stuff, usually when it's in the yellow, um, yellow or green, you know, I guess that's OK. Steering shaft, torque sensor is not moving. Turn the steering wheel. We got no output at all on the motor. I mean, guys, we got like no motor at all. I mean, the motor feels like it's just completely locked. This little play here is probably just in the column itself. But when it comes to the steering gear, I got no action at all. Um, so definitely got volts going to it. <clears throat> Active diagnostic senses default. It's not showing us engine RPM. Um, that's not really an important PID though. Uh, temperature. Steering wheel angle change. Zero. Steering wheel angle sensor status. Okay, so, oh, steering wheel angle degree. It's showing us 5773.5 degrees. Um, and I mean, you guys could see the wheel. It's probably only, you know, three or four degrees to the right. So that's definitely an issue, and it's showing up in red there. We graft anything here. I'm going to try to move this steering wheel while we're grafting here. Um, steering wheel angle. Try to turn this steering wheel. I mean, you can't even move it, but I mean, we're definitely communicating with the module here. At first, I was thinking the module might have been bad, but, you know, we definitely have readings. They're just no output here. Maybe it is in lockout mode. Maybe the motor is bad. But, you know, I guess on something like this, if it is a whole assembly, it's not going to really matter. Let's see if we got... Uh, Maybe do, see what we got in special function. Maybe do a st steering wheel angle reset. Uh, we could program the module. So, man, if we do sell, we could program this module in with the, with the launch. You know, what I'll do maybe is I'll write down the uh, software, see if there's an update for it. You get the info on that right there. Oh, this one seems like it's going to be a pretty expensive one to the customer here. Um... But yeah, that data stream, you know, definitely, you know, that's definitely a pretty wild number there. 5,773.5 degrees. So, and then default, but we definitely got volts. We definitely got amps going to the motor. Pretty good information here. I'm going to go ahead and price out to see how they sell these modules or if it's a steering gear itself. All right, guys. So doing a little bit of research, checking, uh, you know, what's the range on everything. You know, I'm not liking on the on the launch. It's not showing me any output on the steering angle. Um, you know, it just basically tells me we got voltage, we got amperage going to the motor. I tried getting to the motor. It's hard out in the parking lot. Um, but I did. I tried getting a price on you know what a motor would cost, what a module would cost. This thing all is all one unit. Um, I called Ford. I mean, these guys at Ford are even trying to sell me the outer tie rods and everything else. You know, see where I could save the customer money. But uh, get this one pulled up. This uh, rack assembly, rack, it's rack gear and module assembly, it's about fifteen hundred bucks. Customer's cost. So I mean, a fifteen hundred dollar rack. It calls for not too bad. Three and a half hours. Obviously, you'll want to line it, reprogram all that stuff, reprogram the module. So that's it guys, 2760 for this rack, rack and module assembly comes in at $1,500, three and a half hours labor, alignment, outer tie rods, got to call into the guy, we'll see if we'll sell it, but make a quick work with the launch, I'm going to use this to, uh, if I do sell the job, I'm going to use this to, to try to program it, we'll see how, if it's able to take care of it or not, if not, I got the J2534 pass through, but hopefully this pulls it off, wait to see if this guy calls back. We could sell this job, not too bad for what it is. I mean, it's a newer truck. I checked for recalls. I checked to make sure he had no extended warranty or if it was still covered, you know, under a powertrain. It's not. I think Ford's three years or 36,000 miles, whatever it is, being a 2016 at 44,000. We'll see what happens. Wait on the call. So we got our man Steve here knocking out this rack. Got it all lit up. 
with that power probe light on the rack. Figure I'd give a shout out to Power Probe 2. I think it works pretty nice. Get a shot of this. Not too bad of a job. Rack, racks, for the rack to come out, cradle's got to come down a bit. Sway bar's got to come off. Drop this thing a couple inches. That motor's pretty huge, but it's all one unit. I'll show you guys what it looks like in the box. So here is the rack and motor assembly and module, all one unit. And I guess this was a, uh, a problematic system from what I've read. But at least it comes with the inners. Looks like it's got the jam nuts on there. Pretty rare from a dealership part. So our man Steve knocked it on out. You can see what we got to do before we reprogram this thing. Got the new one in. I don't know how much light's gonna be down there, but you can see the old one on the floor here. We got it plugged in. They give you enough uh, wire there to, you know, do the reprogram. You know, take obviously information out of this module and put it in the new one that's in there. But definitely enough room. Steve knocked it out, piece of cake. Got new outer tie rods on it. We'll jump up in here and see what this launch can do. So basically what I'm guessing is we're going to have to get the information off the old rack module. I don't know. Whoa. Get the seat back a little bit here. Get you guys set up. Alright. Get that straight. Hang on a sec. You got the bolt in there? Yeah. Steering straight. We got to still align it and do the... Uh, Steering angle reset. All right, let's get powered up here. Boot up the launch. Get out of here from the last time. So we're going to Ford. Let this load up. Probably gonna edit on through this to save some SD space. Automatically search. Turn the ignition on. Two. Hit OK. 2016. Yes. Let this finish up. We still got the old rack plugged in right now. So of course the four coals are still going to be in there. The car doesn't know that we changed the rack yet. Let this finish up. Get the information off of this. Go into the power steering control module. We'll go to uh, special functions, I believe. Program module mounting. Caution, this function will change the vehicle status. Okay. Ensure that the module currently installed in the car is the old one that needs to be replaced. Before programming a module, please clear the DTCs of the vehicle for security of the module program. Please connect it with the additional power to keep scanner connected. So Steve's gonna Steve's gonna put the jumper on the battery and then I'm gonna clear the codes because it wants you to clear the codes, yes. Clearing fault memory complete. We're gonna go back into special functions, program module. Steve's got the jumper on the battery. Give him a second, okay. Alright, we're on, we're good on that. Hit OK. Set ignition switch to position two. We're on that. Hit OK. Oh, no. Off. OK. Install the new module. All right, Steve, go ahead and plug in the new one if you can. If you want to raise me up, you can raise it up. Steve's going to plug it in now. Let's see if we get a shot of him. Alright, okay, so we got it all set. It took a minute to get it plugged in. We had to get a tap a new ground on the new rack. It didn't have a mount for the for the new ground. So we'll hit install new module, okay. Turn ignition on the two. Okay. 
processing, please wait. Module program proceed, please wait. Seconds, four, three, two, one. Set ignition off. Okay, back on. Okay. I noticed right away already we got no messages on the dash. Ignition off. Okay. Procedure succeed. Okay. That should have done it. Can I start this? I'm going to start it and see if we got any lights. And see, most importantly, see if we got steering back. It moves. No messages on the dash. Launch pulled it off. Well, wrapping this one up. There you have it, guys. The launch taking care of a reprogram on the power steering control module. The 2016 Ford Exploder. Man, I can't believe how expensive that rack and module assembly was. But, hey, I make the most of my money off of Fords. It is what it is. Take that thing for a test drive. Get it aligned real quick. Do the uh, steering wheel angle reset after the alignment. That launch will be able to take care of that too. Just a quick one. Edit this together for you guys. As always, like, comment, subscribe. I'll have links to this die gun down in the description as always. Catch you in the next one. Signing out.